eye. You may be noticing some return to ascension symptoms that we have escaped for the last while, but there's there's been a little trickling in of those old familiar ascension symptoms with some new ones as well, I have to add. So we had a new moon in Taurus on the 11th and there was, it was like a heavy energy I felt. I noticed with some people there was a prickliness or a sense of irritation or frustration. Exasperation. Confusion. Swaying back and forth on life choices and lifestyle. Also an increase in the need to drink water craving water, thinking of dreaming about having water, whether that be bathing in water, drinking water, connecting with water. Water seems to be so important for our expansion right now. Always will be, always has been, but I felt in the last six months this constant thirst and waking up with a very dry mouth, which I, I'd never had that before tuned into my angels and asked what it was about and they said that there was extra light codes, higher frequencies coming in as humanity is merging heaven and earth and our DNA on a quantum level is being changed so we need the water to help metabolize those changes. I've been getting many uploads in the last 48 hours and I can't actually keep up with all of them. I'm still trying to digest or translate some of them but what I can share right now is that there is a huge profound awakening happening. People are looking at their choices and they realize that there's some really big decisions to be made. So I know some of you are facing this decision that I'm talking about and also some multiple smaller decisions because let's face it, it's all connected. It's like branches on the tree, okay? So what I will say, because I felt like I, I went through this maybe, what, two months ago? And let me suggest to you, it's so much better when you just make the decision. Just make a decision. Sometimes we fragment our energy and we lose parts of ourselves. We give, we start to leak power through our chakras when we're constantly second guessing and doubting our decisions. When we're on a seesaw going back and forth, that will cause way more stress than actually just making a decision. And even if you realize when you head down the path of that decision, this isn't quite what I want. You can always do a U-turn. You can always turn around and make another decision. But what I found is by making that decision, and stopping the fragmentation, stopping the splitting of energy, even that little bit you go down that road is going to give you new information. So that new information, new perspective is beneficial in where you'll go next. And it's already changed the timeline. It's already changed the trajectory of where you would have gone or where you would have been stuck, stagnating if you were just in the same spot vacillating between left, right, left, right, not going anywhere. So this is definitely a time of big decisions. And I would say this message is timeless. If you're stumbling across this message 30 years from now, <laughs> I'm sure I won't be on these, this probably won't even, YouTube probably won't exist 30 years from now. Um, but indulge me. 
this message is for you. If you're resonating, if you're actually at a choice point in your life, this is a choice point time. Make a decision, line up with it, connect with it, go for it. Give it 110% of your focus, of your energy and have laser vision. And like I said, if you go down that road and you realize actually this is not, this is not taking me where I want to be. Just by making that decision and moving energy, you've created movement and the universe will respond to that. You'll find, I find, if you make a wrong decision and you have that intuitive awareness that you need to course correct, I find you get so much support from the universe to help you take that turn and to head in the right direction and it happens very quickly things fall into place very quickly and you get the relief that you want so yeah it's definitely a time of a lot of reflection a lot of contemplation i feel like we're too much in our heads at this current time i feel like we need to even just by doing this, placing your hand on your solar plexus, placing your hand on your heart, on your heart chakra, you're reminding yourself to be in the body. You're pulling your energy back into the heart space and you're keeping your focus and you're keeping yourself on track. So yeah, the water drinking, really important. You may find that you're finding yourself in need of more rest. There's like an exasperation or just a feeling of overload or needing to to pull back from something that's what I'm getting there's something there's some drama there's some tension that you need to pull back from and you need to recalibrate so the next two weeks is going to be recalibration time I'm finding I all of a sudden from going from my appetite decreasing, now it's increased. So you might need to eat more food to support the influx of this change in the quantum, the quantum change in the light body, in the etheric bodies. You are ascending, you are expanding and the water, the good food, the whole food supports that change, it supports that shift. You also may find your guides are asking you to be quiet and to listen. There's a need to talk less, to be present more, to simply observe and listen to the sounds, the, the senses in your body around you and become the observer. There's a lot of inflowing messages for you. There's a lot of guidance here. But you need to be quiet and you need to listen. I just put up my latest article on my website and it's all about how to make a decision from the higher self, the higher consciousness over the ego self, the ego voice. So we have a soul voice and we have an ego voice. Many times I have clients say, how do I know the difference between the two? They vacillate. I can't tell the difference. How do I know I'm acting from my higher consciousness? This article is, it's, it's short, but it, it's succinct. It explains it really clearly. Basically, it's telling you the, you can literally, there's, there's a list of, there's markers that tell us when it's the soul voice. So you can check out that article now at avingdoyle.com. So that's A-O-I-B-H-E-A-N-N-D-O-Y-L-E.com. And go into the blogs and you'll see, it's the latest one, so it'll come up. You can, you can just, you'll, if you search around, you'll find it, but it's the latest one. So that's, that's what I, and I, I really feel it's important at this time. I've got a lot of emails responding saying, the divine timing of that article was incredible. And that's because we're at this choice point. So this decision making that's happening right now to us or that we are engaging with is deciding 
how not just the rest of this year, but how the next five years, 10 years will play out. This is a pertinent time. I heard an astrologer say that the moons in May were powerful, pertinent and important that we took the time to go within and to connect with what's true for us now. Letting go of what's obsolete, letting go of what's no longer appropriate or relevant to our lives. We are different people. That's especially the person we were in January 2020. We've completely changed now, moving, you know, a year and a half onwards. What is obsolete? What do you need to allow to crumble? What do you need to allow to fall away? See it like dead leaves on the tree, they're showing me. The dead leaves are just falling, falling down. You do not need to catch those leaves. They are dried up. They have no juice left in them. They have no life force for you. They've served their purpose. They've ran their course. They've had their season. You're in a new time now. So not being afraid to make those decisions moving forward. And as I said, don't do the whole seesaw thing. The seesaw thing will exhaust you. It will frustrate you. It will bring up all your triggers. There comes a time where you just need to literally go, okay, left or right, intuition, go. And just, just take it, just take that move. And that will bring you onto a new course, a new energy. It gives off the information to the universe that you are willing to make a change and that you're willing to take action. Law of attraction, action. Action is really important to back up our desires. Now I'm getting neutralized. We need to neutralize. Neutralizing our energy field. Lots of meditation. Lots of deep rest. Careful what you're giving your attention to. Do not be pulled into other people's dramas. Other people, including yourself, we all have to take responsibility on this journey. We all have to be our best self and show up as our best self. It's okay to make mistakes as long as we acknowledge our mistakes, learn from them and then move on. We don't allow mistakes become habits because habits are unconscious, poorly made choices. When we know it's a bad habit, it's no longer a habit because we shine the light of consciousness upon it. So now we have presence and awareness to know that that's a choice. And if you keep doing that, that is your choice to make that, to take that action that does not serve you. But don't lie to yourself, accept that it is a choice and it's no longer an unconscious habit. So when we, when we take back our power and say, wow, this is actually a choice. This is a bad, this is a choice I make that doesn't serve me. And I hate the words good or bad, okay? But sometimes we have to use them with language so, so I can ex express the, the point, the lesson, the, the channeling message. But if you're making choices that do not match up to who you know in your heart of hearts you truly are, this is a great time to mend that to reflect upon it and to make a fresh, new, healthy choice that does serve you. It's a great time to connect with your guides, to ask them to come close into your energy field so you can feel them because at this reflective time, our auras are breathing well and we can really reach out to spirit when we're still and meditating and, and pulling back from the noise of the world. Just tuning in. Ah, yes. And my Pleiadian friends are here. The Cassiopeians are here. Arcturians. <laughs> Syrians, it's a phone call, someone is. 
Okay. Lyrens. Lyrens. Do you ever way you wanna? The Lyrens, the Lyrens. Okay. I feel I have a lot of new videos to do with our extraterrestrial friends, with our other dimensional cousins. I like to see them like cousins because that's what they are. They're actually in many ways related to us in more ways than we can understand, especially on a quantum level. If you're interested in hearing more and maybe to find out the different extraterrestrial energies, blueprints, leave a comment in the box or leave a comment in the comment section below. And yeah, I feel like a lot of you have ET connections or star being connections that you're not even aware of. Getting lots of Cassiopeians with the energy of who's watching this right now and Lyran as well. Okay, we'll do, we'll do more on that. Sending you all the love. Have a great day or night wherever you are. Take care.